and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Centaurus. That's what we're going to call this deck. This is a Shadow Isles Targon deck that's going to be a, a mid rangey deck that's going to be comp that's going to have at the top end, we're going to have our invoking Celestial cards and we're going to have Hecarim. So we're having Hecarim with Targon with Celestial cards. And so naming it, so, you know, how to name this deck, you know, we have our three champions. Um, decided to go with Centaurus because that's the Centaur constellation. And I thought that would be kind of cool with Hecarim being a Centaur. And then these uh, constellations kind of like with the Celestial cards. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. So that's this is going to be our deck. We're going to have, uh, we're still going to have pretty good early game stuff, right? We have Bark Beast, Solari Soldier, Warden's Prey, you know, eight one drops. We have a zero drop. Uh, we have our Curse Keeper plus Blighted Caretaker combo, because that combo is just amazing. So we could still curve out with Bark Beast, Curse Keeper, Blighted Caretaker some games. We have that, but then um, but then our value is not going to be ending with Solari Priestess, Star Shaping. Solari Priestess is another good card for Blighted Caretaker as well. And we'll have this awesome kind of top end. Um, so we have a lot of small units, so that's good for Thresh. Thresh can, can control the board for us. Um, when Thresh levels up and attacks, we're either putting in Hecarim, which is awesome, or putting in Aurelian Soul, also awesome. So we're putting in one of those two with Thresh. Um, and then, you know, we just have some other cards that are just awesome, like Infinite Mind Splitter, just a great card. Rekindler, a great card. If we have Aurelian Soul die and then bring back Aurelian Soul with Rekindler, dang, that could be awesome. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's kind of our deck. You know, the Star Shaping should help out against Aggro with healing our Nexus. You know, Hush, of course, is just amazing. And then we have some really good two-mana spells with Pale Cascade and Glimpse Beyond. Going Vile Feast to get that Spiderling to help out Blighted Caretaker and Thresh. Going with that over Unspeakable Horror and getting a Nightfall card because we kind of need that. And that's Warden Spray's in here, too. Warden Spray just helps out our Blighted Caretaker. Um, that's why that's why that's in here. We just need some more things that it's okay for them to die to, to unlock the power of Blighted Caretaker. All right, so let's try this deck out. This one looks really fun. It's something a little different. Centaurus. This one should be pretty sweet. So Jawani Swain didn't do too well. It did okay. Um, you know, those mid-range decks, you got to have your cards match up for the right matchup, and that didn't happen for us. So we got Bark Beast, Curse Keeper, Pale Cascade. I'm going to keep those three. Um, we could Vile Feast our own Cursed Keeper to turn it into a 4-3. And our Bark Beast into a 3-3. Or we got Blighted Caretaker. See, I like this. Like, we look like a, a Shadow Isles aggro deck. And so we can have those aggro deck starts and, and have our opponent uh, kind of on the back burner. See, Cosmo likes that too. And uh, But then we can surprise them with having, you know, these cards. Thresh, Hecarim, Aurelian Soul, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, unfortunately we don't have the attack token on turn three. That would be the best of having just Blighted Caretaker on turn three with the attack token. So we're gonna wait till turn four for Blighted Caretaker. Which does mean... Oh, I, I mean, I could just attack with the Curse Keeper or whatever. I, actually, I probably shouldn't attack because I want to kill it anyway. But anyway, so that does mean that this turn I can go like Bark Beast and then hold up Pale Cascade or Vile Feast. And stop staring. All right, I'm gonna kill that. Oh, so now, would I rather have Bark Beast in play, or would I rather cast Pale Cascade next turn? Because I could get like the saplings. I could Pale Cascade the sapling that's challenging the Eye of the Dragon. I kind of like that, but that means no Bark Beast. I guess I don't. I don't have room for the Bark Beast anyway, though, because of the Spiderling. Do I? A yeah, I wouldn't have room for that Bark Beast anyway. So good call not playing the Bark Beast. Force is meaningless without skill. A pleasure to see you, Master. I know they can kill my Blighted Caretaker, but I think that's okay. Man, P 
Hail Cascade with Blighted Caretaker is sweet. <laughs> Ouch, taking down a Lee Sin like that. It's their only champion, so that's one out of their three Lee Sins, which is their most important card for sure. I fight with my spirit, not my fists. That was pretty awesome. Uh, oh, play stuff. And see at the Let's draw some cards. Hopefully draw a Thresh. Thresh is good against Draglings. I like Mage Seeker Conservator. Breathe in, breathe out. Well, there we go. Because the Draglings are going to be dying at the end of turn, which helps level up Thresh. Rude. Confine and contain. Alright, so playing this Mage Seeker and Servitor out here to block their Draglings they're going to attack back with. Oh yeah, that's a pretty sparkle play. It's good for me to keep a lot of things in play for Thrash. You'll go no farther. Dawn and Dusk. This is the Thrash that they know about. It's important in this game to always be playing the, the cards they know about. Keep, it's important to keep track of that. So you're playing the least in deck yesterday's in the bottom 10 cards, four games in a row. <laughs> Didn't have Solari get ridden in the stars. That's gonna it's gonna be a problem. Alright, so I go the box and we kill these two draglings. Or I attack and let draglings block. I'll just attack attack, let draglings block, see what my opponent does. Ready yourself. Ooh, you're interesting. Yeah, that works for me. Alright, so we got level up Thrash, so even if they get rid of this Thrash, I have the other Thrash. And... Oh, no, no, because they didn't block with the Messenger, so it's not leveled up quite yet. Obliterate all enemies with three or less power. Do they have another celestial card besides this one? I'm not sure if they do or not. They do not. All right, so I don't need to play the fill cascade. Now they don't behold a celestial card. So that didn't do anything. Hey Godfrey. Bask in her radiant blessing. We each hold the world within. So we have like two out of three chance of putting in Hecarim. Or we put in Aurelian Soul, and it that kind of matters of like who I want to attack with, it, whether or not we're putting in Hecarim or Aurelian Soul. All 
All right, we're gonna cast the box. I'll get rid of one eye of the dragon and a dragonling. Or not. Like, I wish I had more room, right? I wish we could, like, Dawn and Dusk Thresh. That would be cool. And put in a whole bunch of champions. What is gained when you return malevolence? Okay. So let's see. Let's attack with. Follow the horizon. Maybe just attack with these, because it's most likely going to be Hecarim that brings in two other things. Most likely. You know, I don't really need to attack with these things, but I also kind of want more. I want more room. Plan is to have, you know, this take out this eye of the dragon. The vile feast take out the other eye of the dragon. We already took out one eye of the dragon too, right? So this is this is their third. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because this this challenge thresh challenged one, right? Yes, right there. Huh. I just took it all. I don't know much, but I can't imagine that that is the best play to do, is just take it all. They saw Hecarim and they gave up. I'm still counting this as a win. Jeez. I don't know if they just got disconnected or what, but... I haven't played against Twisted Ezreal in a little while. It's been a while. Alright, Hush is definitely gone. I think I'm going to mulligan Bark Beast as well. That thing dies very easily to make a rain, static shock, that kind of stuff. Thresh has a lot of health, I like that. Solari Soldier also has a lot of health. I like that too. Nothing like the stink of blood and sweat. Oh, I suppose we just trade one drops. Transgressions. Say your farewell. Not my favorite. <laughs> What's up, Curse Keeper? The world's a big place. Let's see all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds dangerous. I'm in. <laughs> All right, draw two while they're tapped out. Sure. A couple of good cards. We'll take them. Of course, going right to attacks. All right, <laughs> so I was planning on going right to attack, so then it got slowed down, had to hit the brakes. Um, so I could Vile Feast Ezreal and then Blighted Caretaker. I guess the upside, the upside of that is just too high. My, my plan was gonna be just attack and then play the Solari Priestess. Yeah, that's unfortunate they didn't let me do this. This is still me having the exact same number of cards in hand as they do. Firing. 
So have one extra card in hand. That's worth it. Watch and learn. Nailed it. Gosh, these are both pretty good. The warrior, the obliterate, the traveler. Traveler's not bad either. Uh, get to invoke another card. Maybe I just go the Traveler. No, I should probably just take one of these things that removes Ezreal. It's just like removing Ezreal with a six mana card is a feels bad. Bask in her radiant blessing. Glad I didn't just take the obliterate card, because we just drew an, one of those. Drew an obliterate. We'll lead a Solari soldier, because, you know, we can see whether we want to play Thrasher or the Warrior. So they missed. They have a PNZ card. Going Thresh, because if they have Thermogenic Beam... Does not kill Thrash. Thermogenic Beam will kill the Warrior. Devotion to battle. Like a worm on a hook. I don't think it makes sense to just butcher the Blighted Caretaker. I was thinking about it. I don't think it makes sense to do that. Ezreal's at 4 out of 10, and 1 Ezreal down. Feeling pretty good about this game about now. Will refill my spell mana, but I won't be able to play the warrior. Still definitely worth it. And of course, I behold this celestial car they can't do anything about. Unless they just go like fast speed slide of hand. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just end around and have you waste all that mana. But yeah, a deck that's built on doing lots of small damage, like this one that we're playing against. I feel pretty good about giving all of my units for the rest of the game, plus two, plus two. If they start doing some damage to this thing, we can start shaping and heal it. And then call me a shark. All right. I gonna vengeance that thing. So basically, I don't want to play Blighted Caretaker to block it, and they just have something that does three damage, which is very easy for them to have. So they have something that does three damage, they kill this. Now they get to attack for seven. Um, you know, I, I just don't want that to happen. I don't want to take like that risk that seven damage. Man, imagine if Aurelian Soul dies here, and then we just rekindle it right back. They could have, like, Parlay plus Thermogenic Beam and kill it. I could Ravenous Butcher my Aurelian Soul. What's up, Kordak? Yeah. Yeah, this is your deck here. This is Hecarim with Targon. 
we're calling it. Uh, oh, I have it still labeled as Celestial Hes Hecarim. We had a lot cooler name for that. I forgot. I forgot to change it up here. Centaurus. All right, what are they doing? Make it rain? Yeah, you can make it rain. Go ahead. I kind of want to ravenous butcher it. That's so. Is that greedy to just go ravenous butcher? I really want to. All right, we're. I'm just gonna do it. I mean, how often do we get to ravenous butcher and a really soul? I mean, yeah, I should pass. Oh yeah, they're gonna Riptide Rex. That's a good call. They're probably gonna Riptide Rex. That's a good call. Yeah. Okay. I just want to rekindle her back a really soul. Like that's all I want to do. <laughs> I just wanted to do that. So that's 18 power right now. I need 20 to level up, so we'll, like, Pale Cascade. So that'll be 20. Yeah, now we butcher a really insult. I do love an audience. I don't remember you at all. This game's kind of over. Kind of over. Feel me in. Soak it in. So we want to play these other Celestials first before these to, so they can pump up more. Which I guess I should have led with Solari Priestess this turn. But it didn't. Alright, Rekindler, Aurelian Soul. That's a combo. Victory today, freedom tomorrow. Ooh, a Hecarim mirror match. Going Hecarim and Freljord with Maokai. This is interesting. I like it. We don't have the attack token turn one, unfortunately. This would be perfect attack token turn one. And Lady Elise, where are you? No, 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 no. Ow. Shark chariot. Lasso Shark Chariots. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm just going to play this so we can get saplings to block. Usually we want our saplings attacking, I know, but we're just going to have them block the sharks. Save our life total. The question is Solari Soldier or Attack? I think the answer is Solari Soldier. They what play like Maokai? Like I'm, and like that's that's fine. I, I wouldn't mind Maokai blocking anything with me having Pale Cascade. Alright, so those are the same. Are they some more sharks? Ephemerals don't usually block that well, which is means it's good to play units before attacking. There you are. Oh, it was Blighted Caretaker? Well then. 
That's pretty rough. They're gonna have another blind caretaker here. The chains, they never stop. I'm not gonna play that. I was, you know, definitely thinking of going Bark Beast first before this, but I'm just gonna sacrifice. I wanna just draw my two cards, see what we get. Use a champion. Everyone's a god. Strange glow. So I'm taking six damage. them to challenge. <laughs> I also didn't want them to challenge my Bark Beast. Star shaping this turn. Um, man, I have to behold something else. Man, this obliterate. Uh, that'd be good. I guess I just take the great beyond, though. I'm not really going to be holding anything else. I mean, the the great beyond doesn't matter for another couple of turns. None of those cards really matter. All right, I'll check it out, Zion. I like the Thresh draw. So we have Vengeance. We got some stuff. 16, 16. I think their plan was it was like play this, be able to attack, and then next turn un untap and atrocity it. I think that's their plan. All right, Sejuani Gangplank. So how are we gonna match up against a more aggressive deck now? I guess we did kind of play against an aggressive deck just a little bit ago. So we'll, well, no, I'm going to keep Vengeance, because killing Gangplank and Sejuani is super important. We're going to keep Vengeance. I like Vile Feast. You know what? I'm going to try all these. I... So I'm not planning on playing Bark Beast on turn one, because of Parlay, Mega Rain, that kind of stuff. So they don't have that many spells. It's basically like fast spells to stop Glimpse Beyond. It's basically like Parlay. Or so sorry, it's basically like make it rain. Be nothing left when I'm done. So good. That keeps them from doing a point of nexus damage. Um, I guess I'm not going to stop them playing the two one. I should leave ye be. Proud warriors of the sun's true light. Suppose you want in on this. Oh, suppose I should leave ye be. All right. 
Wow. Wow. It was over. That was fast. That was fast. I guess... I guess they just really had, you know, not much in their hand. They hadn't dealt any Nexus damage yet, and their one-drops weren't going to be getting through, and... Yeah, they just went to the next game. Wow. Yeah, aggro level patience. Yep, exactly. Alright, so we have Heimerdinger and Trundle. Hush. Get rid of one Thresh. I mean, Thresh is awesome. Maybe get rid of both Thresh? No, Thresh is too good. I do want to see more early game stuff. Okay, okay. But again, this isn't a, a matchup that I think that it's going to be completely necessary to have early game stuff. Hybriding or Trundle. Good to have these things that can play a longer game. That has quite a bit of card advantage. Glimpse Beyond has been good. Pale Cascade, of course, is always good. So the rough part about this is that if I, I glimpse beyond, I don't get to have Falling Comet for a champion next turn, because they can play champions next turn. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to just let that happen. I would have glimpsed beyond in my 1-2 here and kept the 3-1. Oh. We gotta be able to do this. Heimer, we can fight a little bit with the Thrash. A little bit. Order, entropy, a never-ending cycle. good. Round and round and round it goes. Yeah, that's pretty good. Sunlight guiding, my brethren. Alright, I'm just gonna hold on to this mana. I'm just gonna bank this mana. So I have ten. Vengeance is a lot safer. Vengeance gives me three mana left. It's a lot riskier because of all the Freljord protection spells. Did I do this wrong or something? No. Okay, no, they just have double troll chance. to a 1-6? Darn. Well, that was a waste. I wish I would have just played this new Thresh. That's my bad. So 8 mana. 1 mana short. Yeah, that was... Warm hearts and hot soup. Wow. Wow. What are we doing over here? Huh. What are they doing over here? 
replacing Hecarim like that? What Have them waste that mana. This one's on the house. But they're saplings. Believe or burn. Right, this will be leveled up thrash. I'm just basically just clearing up a spot on the board. Okay. So if, if we get to attack with this Thresh, which is pretty likely, but not 100% likely, but if we are, then it'll either bring in Hecarim or Aurelian Soul, one of those two. I was just basically just keeping up Blimps Beyond. Okay. What do we get? Aurelian Soul? Hecarim? Hecarim. Alright, two out of seven. Ephemerals for Hecarim. Let's talk about your tab. I don't think that's worth a hush. I could hush and keep these from being frostbitten. I don't think that's worth it. What will you have? I don't behold another Celestial card, do I? No, I do not. Okay, it looks like I would have beheld another Celestial card. Kindler could be nice. Yep, I don't know. We have targets for Hush. I mean, Trundle, I mean, they're a Trundle deck. Trundle can get, like, can attack and be, like, huge, huge overwhelm. That sounds like something that I'm going to want to Hush. All right, GG's. Centaurus with a 5-0. And a Masters rank back-to-back -back days with a 5-0 with a sweet deck. Yesterday it was with Swole Cat. And today just the power of the Celestials. And Thresh was just amazing in all of our games. This card is really, really good. And so like this just controls the board really well, being the 3-6, and it gives us time for our Celestials to kind of come down and take over the game and everything. Yeah, this was really cool. We got to rekindle her back in Aurelian Soul. That doesn't happen very often, but yeah, we got to play in Aurelian Soul, have it die to Riptide Rex, bring it back with rekindle her. That was really cool. Um, yeah, this deck, this deck felt pretty solid. It did. Hecarim did its thing. It's kind of crazy how, like, you know, the 5-5 five, five Overwhelm that also brings in multiple other bodies just didn't seem that important. <laughs> but it was still, it was, you know, pretty, it was pretty good. Um, yeah, it's true. We did not play against any Coaling Strikes. 
that would have been sad for the Thresh. But that's why we have Pill Cascade, right? Like, they cooling strike, we Pill Cascade. Boom. Problem solved. But yeah, our, our combination of Glimpse Beyond, Pale Cascade, those two were both awesome of, of getting us tons of cards, getting us deep into the deck, and then Solari Priestess, Star Shaping, were really good with their invoking. So fun one to play here, Centaurus. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there and leave those comments. Try this deck out. Let me know how it goes. Um, you know, give me any of that feedback. You know, please. Yeah, try this one out. This one was pretty sweet. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.